Good day, grade 8 learners, and welcome to Tumamina Teaching. You are tuned into your first lesson of Term 4 EMS Financial Literacy. Today we'll be focusing on the general ledger, which is a totally new concept for you. It is very important for you to learn about the general ledger, especially since you'll be learning more about it in grade 9. So these lessons are the groundwork and the foundation for you to better understand accounting in the future. Okay, so let's start with the definition of a general ledger. The general ledger is a collection of the accounts of a business. These ledger accounts summarize all amounts entered in detail by date in the journals. The financial statements will be generated from the summarized totals in the ledger. It is the central focus of any bookkeeping system. Okay, grade eights, let me put it like this. The general ledger is the summary of all the accounts put in one document called the general ledger. So where does the general ledger fit in the accounting cycle? The first step in the accounting cycle is transactions. The second step is when the transaction is recorded on a source document. And the third step is when the source documents are recorded on subsidiary journals. And then step four is when all the journals are posted on the general ledger. And this is what this lesson is about. Before we can record the general ledger, we first have to understand the format of the general ledger and the accounting concepts with regards to the general ledger. Each ledger account has two sides, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Now the left-hand side is the debit account and the right is the credit. Entries in the general ledger are based on the double entry principle, which is for every debit entry, there must be an equal and corresponding credit entry. This means for every one rand entered into the debit side of the T accounts, another one rand must be entered into the credit side. The two sides must be the same when you add each side. If this is still confusing to you, don't worry, it will make sense later in this lesson. At the top of the general ledger, the name of the business should be recorded first. Then the section of the general ledger should be recorded. So there are two sections called the balance sheet section and the nominal account section. The specific account name should also be recorded. The folio number of the specific account, for example, B1 or N2, etc. The year and month in which this general ledger takes place and the day of the transaction. The name of the other half of the double entry account. This is the folio number of the journal from which this transaction has been transferred. And lastly, the amount or value of the transaction. Okay, so I have already said that the general ledger has two sections, the balance sheet section and the nominal account section. In the balance sheet account section, the following accounts will be recorded. Number one, equity accounts, which is capital and drawings. Number two, all the assets. And thirdly, all the liabilities. In the nominal account section, the first one is income. And secondly, expense accounts will also be recorded. Okay, grade 8 learners, do you still remember the table behind me? As you can recall, I told you that this table is one of the things you need to know off by heart in accounting. Because, for instance, it is important to know that a vehicle is an asset. This will allow you to understand where to record this on the general ledger. Okay, grade 8, so we've made this a bit easy for you. We've created an acronym that will allow you to record where the accounts will be on the general ledger. This acronym is called DALIC. On the debit side, the D stands for drawings. A stands for assets. L stands for losses, which is also called expenses. And on the credit side, the L stands for liabilities. I stands for income and lastly C stands for capital. So what does this mean? DAL is the accounts that increase on the debit side and then decrease on the credit side and LIC is the accounts that increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. Okay grade 8 learners let's get a bit more practical. The first thing that we do when recording in the general ledger is to open the ledger accounts first.
The two golden rules are as follows. If it is a column total in the journal, you post the total at the end of the month, which means you will post the last day of the month. If it is a sundry account, you post the amount on the day the transaction took place. Let's have a look. First, we will record the capital transaction that took place on the 1st of April, and then the one on the 30th of April. We should record these two capital transactions separately. This should always be done chronologically. Okay, let's look at the next account that we will record, which is bank. Bank is a column total in the journal. So you will post the total at the end of the month. Bank increases because money flows into the business. We also know that the bank is an asset and will thus increase on the debit side. Next, we will record the current income as all income is recorded next in the general ledger. In this example, there are only two types of income, current income and rent income. Okay, remember grade eights, income increases on the credit side. Remember, dollar Let's look at the last recording for this lesson, which is rent income. So in this example, it's a sundry account, so the specific date needs to be recorded on the general ledger. Okay, grade 8 learners, as a last exercise, we'll be looking at Dalek. Can you remember and identify which letter represents which account? Okay, time's up. Okay, grade eights, thank you for watching this video. See you next time when we will be focusing on the CPJ and recording this on the general ledger.